Say action when you're action. Hey sports fans, today we're going to show you how to change a spare tire on your vehicle with the tools that came with the car. Now there's a lot of videos out there that cover this subject, okay? What I'm going to try to do here is focus on the things that the other videos tend to not mention or just gloss over, which will end up being really important if you're actually going to be in the situation where you need to change a tire on the side of the road. Uh, you know, in your shop you might have an air wrench, uh, jacks, jack stands, everything you need to make this job as easy as possible, but you're, the only thing you're going to have out on the road is what you have in your car. So it's a good idea, before you ever even have a spare uh, flat tire, uh, to change a tire once using the tools you have with, it, with your car so you'll be able to do it if you have a flat tire on the side of the road. Because if you ever have a flat tire on the side of the road, it's going to be a situation where things aren't perfect like they are in the shop. It's probably going to be dark. It's probably going to be raining. You're probably going to be getting in a hurry to get somewhere. So you want to have as few things encumbering you as possible. You want to take care of as many problems as you can in advance. We can cut it now. Now what am I talking about about having things covered in advance? Um, quite a few things. Um, some of the things you should do when you have your car in the shop, when things are easy, take care of a few things. Like when you take your lug nuts off and you're doing the, like a brake job or something like that, put an anti-seize compound on your uh, lug nuts. It'll make taking them off, you know, the lug nuts off so much easier, particularly when all you have is the factory supplied emergency lug wrench. And uh, like I say, anti-seize compound, you put that, put that on your lug nut uh, threads and uh, on the studs. And also put it, particularly if you have aluminum wheels, right around the hub of where that uh, wheel fits on. And I'll show you about that on a, when we do a video on a brake job. But for right now, that's all you need to know. In your trunk, you're always going to be fighting the battle between uh, having, being prepared for any emergency and you know, being practical. Because you, you haul things in your trunk too, you want some room in there. But you're certainly going to want to have a set of jumper cables. That's a good idea. And here's the most important thing I think is a pair of old boots and a pair of old coveralls or at least a, an old uh, heavy winter coat because you know you've got everybody's got these things and they will sit in the basement or in the attic or in a closet they're just sitting there so I'm not saying buy brand new boots and coveralls and coats and put them in the trunk of your car for emergency I'm telling you take the stuff you're thinking about throwing away anyway and then just throw it in the car throw it in the trunk of the car and uh, that way it's taken care of. What difference does it really make whether it's sitting in your closet or in the trunk of your car if you're really not planning on ever using it again? Um, aside from just keeping you warm, having a pair of coveralls, it'll keep you from getting dirty. If you're going someplace and you're wearing nice clothes and you gotta get there on time, okay, and you get a flat tire, yeah, you can call AAA on your cell phone and wait. And wait and wait. So you'll miss your appointment. So if you know how to change your tire and you have the equipment to change your tire, um, you'll make it to where you got to go on time. And if you have some way of keeping clean, you'll be presentable when you get there. This is all things you should think about in advance. Like I say, be prepared. Uh, make sure you have everything you need. Like, for example, what if you needed a basketball? Okay, we're prepared. So let's see what we got here for uh, spare tire parts. Um, and equipment. Okay, now we had just got done doing some rearranging back here, so we didn't have everything put in exactly the way it should be. However, one thing that's important to know on your car, they will have instructions. A lot of times it'll be on this floor piece about how to use the jack and how to put everything back away, which is so, one of the toughest parts of the job how to get everything ba put back away the way you need to have it put. Um, sometimes the, the, there might be a sticker up here on the inside of the trunk. And of course, you always have the owner's manual to refer to. Because a lot of the stuff, it isn't really common sense, but uh, how you put everything back together. So just bear that in mind. Uh, take a look at this before you need to use it, either in your owner's manual or here. Become aware and actually do the job of changing the tire. Uh, you will appreciate it if you ever do have the situation arise in real life. So, let's take out the parts we need. Here we got our space saver spare. 
and our jack. Okay? Now, when you have a flat tire on the side of the road, when you're driving down the road, you notice you have a flat. Once again, it, it's, it's a whole thing of... Oh yeah, let me, we'll just start over again. When you notice you have a flat tire while you're driving down the road, okay? Once again, be prepared. In other words, know the condition of your tires. If it's a situation where you need to get new tires anyway, okay? The only thing you should be thinking about at all is safety. If you're on a busy highway and your tire goes flat and you gotta change it yourself, if you don't have time to have somebody else come and do it for you, probably drive it slow on the rim until you can get that car to a safe place. Uh, a quarter mile, no problem if you drive the car slow. And, uh, you, and that's if you're counting on the tire being ruined anyway. Um, so, if you, but if you have tires that you know are good, they got a lot of tread left on them, I'd say pick the closest spot that you can feel reasonably safe changing the tire. And there's so many things that you have to think about. The traffic on the road, if it's uh, uh, got the flat tire on the road side. But on the curb side, the width of the shoulder. If that road doesn't have a good shoulder, you know, I think you're, you're pretty much out of the game as far as fixing the tire yourself, at least not in that spot. You got three choices. You're either going to have to drive that car in a flat very slowly to a safe area, you're, or you're going to have to call roadside assistance. I don't really see changing a tire on a road that's got traffic on it where you haven't got much of a shoulder. If that shoulder is soft, the jack's going to sink into the uh, into the soft ground. So you have to consider all of these things uh, before you actually go and do the job. Okay, you can cut it right there. All right, now, if you've never changed the wheels on the vehicle before, okay, like I say, it's so important, do this in your shop or your garage first. You, you don't want to have the very first time you take a wheel off your car using this stuff out on the side of the road. You just don't want to have that be the situation. But the first thing is, is when you have a flat tire, of course you're going to want to make sure your car is in park. If your car has enough uh, manual transmission, you want to make sure it's in gear with the emergency brake on, parking brake if you want to call it that. One bit of advice for you, you'll see in all the traditional type of videos and safety films about changing a tire, they'll say, set the emergency brake. Well, yes and no. If, if you have an automatic transmission car and you've never stepped on the emergency brake on that car, it says some people call it the parking brake, if you never use the parking brake, don't use it, because this is what will happen. It will apply the brake, but that old emergency brake cable that's never been worked, used, is all rusty. So it will apply, but it will not release. So then you'll be there, you'll have the tire, you can change the tire, but your, your emergency brake is stuck on on. So the best advice I can give you, remember in driver's ed when they said, use the emergency brake when you shut off your car and you're thinking to yourself, Okay, I'll do it right now because that's what the instructor tells me to and that's probably what they'll say on the test, but I'm never going to do it again because no one else does it. There is one reason, if no, no, no other, there is at least one reason to use an emergency brake or a parking brake, whatever you want to call it, on an automatic transmission car is to prevent it from uh, seizing up. So if you, if, you, if you routinely use your parking brake, it'll work uh, probably just about as long as you own the car. If you ever notice a guy with a manual transmission car, he sets his parking brake, doesn't have a problem. And the automatic transmission car, you know, the person who owns it, he, they never use the parking brake. They pull it and it's, it's all over. So that's number one thing I would say that you should have in your uh, practices of driving a car um, as far as changing a flat tire is concerned. Make sure your emergency brake works. Use it. Uh, regularly and if you don't use it and you got an automatic transmission and if you've never used it or you bought a used car and you're certain it's never been used either get it fixed replaced what have you or don't use it because that is what you will end up with you'll end up trapped with a uh, frozen up emergency brake uh, in the engaged position the next thing is your lug nuts this is something you certainly want to do in your own garage or your own shop where you have all your tools at your disposal. You want to make sure you be able to get these lug nuts off. And uh, because if these are super tight, if you put them on with your air wrench and crank them as tight as you can get them, this is not going to get it off. And chances are when you're out inside the road, you won't have a piece of pipe to increase your leverage. This will be all you got. 
If it's super tight and you can't get it, there are some things you can do. You can stand on it and use your body weight to break the lug nut loose like that. That might help some. But uh, these lug nuts, they only had usually the torque spec is probably, I bet, 150 pounds, just guessing. So, you know, they don't need to be that tight. And if they have anti-seize compound on them, you should be able to break them loose. The other thing, if you noticed here, the very first thing I'm doing is I am breaking these lug nuts loose. I haven't even jacked the car up yet because look how the car is moving while I do this. So if it was on the jack, two things would happen. The first thing would be the wheel would just spin and you wouldn't get anything done. Ah, uh, the other thing is, is that let's just say you had a situation where the wheel wasn't spinning. Um, but you had to jacked up, but you, you took some weight off the car, but you knew you had to still have the wheel on the ground. When you're really forcing on this, you saw I was able to even move the car. Uh, you don't want the car to fall off the jack. So even if you had it jacked up, but the tire is still touching the ground, and you really were reefing on these lug nuts, you, the, the jack could tilt and, uh, you know, it would certainly startle you at the least. But, uh, so break your lug nuts free at first. Uh, one other thing to... Let's say you are with a buddy and you got all excited and you got the car up in the air and you forgot to break loose lug nuts first. If you're careful, you can have your buddy step on the brake of the car. That might be just enough to hold that wheel tight while it's up in the air to break those lug nuts free. But ideally, you want to break them loose before you ever get them, uh, get the car on the jack. Now, when it comes time to jacking it up, as per the owner's manual, underneath the car, and on most modern cars, it will be right here in front of the uh, rear wheels and right behind the front wheels. So there is a picture of both the owner's manual and that uh, sticker on the uh, removable, removable piece of the trunk floor. So we'll get this in position here. And I'm going to take wait, quick make one more reference to that picture to make sure I am putting that in the exact right place. I've got this, okay, I've got this right now in the exact right place according to the owner's manual. So everything should be safe here now. One other item I think I might mention, if you have them, chances are you don't have one. Uh, but if you did, <laughs> Chances are you aren't going to have this with you, but if you did, you could use it. Otherwise, you could just find things laying on the side of the road. Uh, it's not a bad idea to put a shock underneath the wheel on the hub. Uh, other side from where you're doing. So if you're doing the back, obviously you got to chalk the front, but make things a little bit safer. Make the car a little bit less likely to roll. I know the car is in park and there's a good chance the emergency brakes on too, but it just makes things, it only took a second to do that. So if you can go ahead, if you can't find one, uh, well, you're, you're going to go in, you're, you're going to get your tire changed. So I suppose it's particularly important if the car was on an incline one way or the other. We'll take our lug wrench and we'll remove the lug nuts. Um, a good 
movie for you to watch right now at this point is uh, the movie The Christmas Story, if you've ever seen it. Uh, if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's the little kid and the dad get a flat tire on the car. And of course, it's pretty realistic because it's at night and it's at the side of the road and it's in the winter time. You know, in other words, less than ideal conditions. And the kid, back in those days he had hubcaps on the car, so he gave you some place to put the lug nuts, as long as I mention that. Yeah, have a place to put your lug nuts. You don't want to lose them. And that's the point I'm talking about right now. So they, they put the lug nuts in the hubcap, and I can't remember why, but for some reason or another, uh, the kid uh, drops the hubcap for lug nuts so they lose all the lug nuts. And uh, a thing like that could happen to you, too. Whatever happens, uh, just walking back. You're, a lot of stuff's going through your mind when this is actual roadside uh, repair. You're thinking about getting where, where you need to go on time, uh, all the things you need to do, how much this flat tire is going to screw up your night or day. So you might not be thinking about those lug nuts when you're walking back to get something out of the trunk of your car, you could kick those lug nuts and they could be gone. Let's say that did happen and you lost all your lug nuts. What would you do at this point? The nicest thing would be to have a set of spare lug nuts in your car, right? Well, in a way you kind of do. The car has three other wheels. You can take one lug nut off of each of the other three wheels and put them on the wheel you're replacing here and it'll hold good enough to get you to the nearest store where you can buy some more lug nuts instead of leaving you stranded on the side of the road. Now, here's the other thing, where being prepared and doing things at home in your garage or your shop is really going to pay off, is to put some anti-seize compound on these wheels so they come off. These aluminum wheels, they really stick to these uh, iron uh, wheel hubs. They're very difficult to uh, take off. Now, even like this one here, she's on there pretty good. There's no lug nuts holding that on at all, okay? But it's not going anywhere. So, what are you going to do? How are you going to get the wheel off? There's, I've heard a lot of things. Uh, <clears throat> you can try kicking it. Uh, you know, like that, going bam with your foot. I've heard, put all the lug nuts back on, just a couple turns, and drive the car a short distance, and slam on the brakes, and maybe that'll lock, break it loose. Of course, you do have a flat tire. That means you'd be riding a flat. I suppose you could put the spare on and do that, but... I tried that before and it didn't work for me. However, here's one thing that does work and I got this, this is like a roadside emergency tip and it works so good, it works better than anything I've come across in the shop. I used to bang these off with a, with a sledgehammer. I'd have one person hold a block of wood against the rib and I'd whack up the sledgehammer and that worked pretty good but it's a two man job. It takes two people. This works better than anything I've ever found and it only takes one. You got your spare tire, you just wrap it with that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, sports fans. Well, check that out. See how difficult that is? That should have broke loose. Ah, we'll give it a little few more rat wax here. Sorry, dog. There we go. There we go. That's all it took. Um. That's just about as effective way of removing a tire as anything I've ever seen when it comes to uh, an aluminum rim being frozen to a uh, cast iron brake hub. Now, Dead cut. at this point all we have to do is put on our Space Saver Spirit. Put on our lug nuts. Also, most of you probably already understand this now, but uh, you want to you're going to want to tighten these lug nuts in the star pattern, and you also want to make sure the wheel is seated properly. You see, at first there I didn't have it seated properly, and you want to make sure that is uh, 
seated evenly uh, all the way around the, the diameter because uh, if not, you will end up kind of wedging that wheel on there. It won't be on there properly. It'll vibrate while you're driving the car and is much more likely to come off. So you want to make sure you have the wheel put squarely on the hub. Okay, once you get these all finger tight, you're going to want to crank them tight. But obviously you can't do that while that's on a jack because the wheel just spins. So what you do, you let down the jack. That's all there is to that. you might want to do when you're just doing little maintenance things on your car is put some lube on this screw on this jack it'll make it a lot easier to turn check to make sure your jack works uh, and that's why I said what I recommended at the very beginning uh, spend the time at home to change your jack with the tools the car supplies because uh, you want to make sure you know how to use them you want to make sure you have all of them and you want to make sure that they work properly so that is Probably the, the main point of this whole video is to do this job before you need to do this job. Um, then lastly, you're going to crank all your nuts tight. And of course you're going to do that in a star pattern, you know, crisscrossing. It doesn't have to be an exact science. Um, but just in general, do one side, then the other, then the other, then the other, okay? Um, don't get too worried about the exact order you did it. Just as long as you're tightening opposite sides. Um, if you tighten the same nut twice in a row, no big deal. But just as long as you, you're tightening, try to go as close as you can to 180 degrees away from the one you just did. And get them all tightened up to the correct torque. And what is the correct torque? Right now we don't know, and on the side of the road you're not going to know. So what you got to do is guess. But the good news is this is a temporary space saver spare. So even if you're not the strongest person in the world, you can get these tight enough. Okay? Let's say you weren't totally confident in your ability to get these tight as you need to get it by hand. Let's say you only weigh 100 pounds. Once you get them as tight as you can by hand, just step on them. It go about that, less than half a turn, uh, somewhere around a half a turn. That'll be tight enough to get you to a repair center or get you home where you can do the job properly and uh, put on your repaired tire. Now, there is some bit of good news here. You know, usually the moral of the story is always don't be lazy, don't be lazy, right? Here's your chance to be lazy. When you're all done, don't bother putting stuff back in the trunk the way it's supposed to go. Just throw that crap in there. I'll tell you why. Because you gotta take that, uh, you gotta take your regular rim out, have it fixed, and then and only then can you put everything away properly. So there's not much sense in spending a long time doing all those fasteners and putting everything in the exact right position for something you're just gonna have to undo. So just throw your tire in there. Don't bother putting anything away the way it says, because you're going to be taking it out again. Throw your cover in there. Put the nut that holds down the cover in there. Don't bother doing it. Right, just put it on. And when you get your tires fixed, and you should do it as soon as possible. These are for temporary use only. Get your original tire fixed, and then get out your owner's manual and take your time. At that point, do it properly and, and read the owner's manual because things won't fit in there just quite right on these new cars. Everything's so cramped. So you got to follow the directions or it won't fit in there properly and things will rattle or that uh, removable floor piece in your trunk won't set down just right. Um, just for, for example, on a lot of these cars, you'd think you'd store the jack away with it jacked all the way down. Some of them has to be jacked just a little bit up so you can fit the bolt through that retains the jack. So spend your time, once you get the tire fixed, putting away your uh, spare tire, your jack, uh, your lug wrench, 
and all those components. Spend your time to do that properly and you'll be happy there. Oh, one other thing, I guess as long as, as I mentioned this, when you have the spare, no one's going to check the air in their spare, right? The air pressure in the spare. Well, you found out if it had enough pressure when you changed the flat tire, but uh, whenever you have the spare, if you're you know, once you get home, when you're putting it all back, check the air in that spare, make sure that's okay. And, uh, or if you're ever cleaning the car and you take that floor panel off, when you have the opportunity to check the spare, take it because it's just not something you're gonna do. You're not gonna tear the car apart to check, uh, check this air in the spare. So when you have a chance to do it, do it. And I think that just about wraps it up on this subject. Thank you. And if you like what you saw, uh, I'd appreciate it if you liked, shared, and subscribed. And uh, we'll see you next time.